I should have known that the age-old strategy of jerk it back and forth until it falls would come through for me. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and I'm out here today to do maintenance on my slip clutch and my brush hog. I've used this implement pretty hard and pretty frequently, so it's taken a little bit of a beating. I've also kept it outside quite a bit. I'm going to be keeping it inside once the new building's done, but for right now, this one is still setting out. So, I need to get several things done. Number one, I need to slip the slip clutch. And that's something you're supposed to do once a season anyway to make sure that that slip clutch will slip so that it's doing the job and protecting, you know, your powertrain on your tractor. But I also want to prioritize getting that done right now because I've been breaking shear bolts. And yes, this brush hog has a shear bolt and a slip clutch. Not sure why, but I don't mind the added protection. Anyway, the fact it's been breaking those makes me want to focus on making sure this slip clutch is actually slipping. Then I'm going to fix this guard so that I can actually grease the drive line. The way you receive it, it's almost impossible to grease the drive line without tearing the whole thing apart. And I've had a few people ask me, how do you grease that front U-joint? So we're going to do that. And we're also going to sharpen or replace or maybe both but we're going to address the rounded off blades on this and then I'm also going to address the oil in the gearbox which has water in it and that might be a good idea to change that oil anyway but at one point my vent cap got broken so on the top of the gearbox that plug didn't have a cap over it and there was a hole probably 3 16 diameter hole just open and it had a roof over it at that time, but I guarantee there's water in this gearbox and you can even see it looks milky. So we're gonna address all those things and hopefully it's helpful to some people out here. So the first thing I wanna do is slip the clutch. So I have a paint marker here and I'm gonna put a paint mark across all the different levels of the slip clutch in a straight line and then take the slip clutch bolts loose, spin the PTO and make sure that it actually slipped. Once that's done, you tighten it back up the same amount that you took it loose. I'll show you as we go though. All right, so first I'm just wiping this off so I can see it, so the paint will stick. Okay, now we'll start the mark up here and then cross the plates here. All right, so on my bush hog, the bolt head on the back is a 5 8 and the nut on the other side is an 11 16 In between those is a spring that puts the correct amount of tension on the slip plate. Now, you want to maintain that same pressure when you're done. So you need to measure how much you're taking it loose. That can be either be done with an actual measurement here or by knowing how much you took the bolts loose. So I'm gonna go one full revolution on each of these bolts, and that should be enough to let it slip. Okay, there's one revolution on that one. We'll go to the next one. This one has six springs and six bolts. It's important to know that so you know when you've done them all. Another way to tell that is when your mark is back at the top, you know you've went all the way around. All right, so we've got them all loose. I'll hook up the PTO and we'll spin this until it slips.
right, so the lines that I made are no longer lined up. After the first time I engaged it and disengaged it, I checked, they were still lined up. I did it a few more times. Now they aren't. That tells me that the clutch is not locked up. I'm gonna take the other end of this loose, rotate it around, look at where my other mark is, and then tighten everything back up. Then I'm gonna remark this again and see if it slips just when I'm out using it because that's what's really important is that it slips when you're using it. So the second issue I want to address is greasing this front U-joint. And a couple of people said there should be a hole up here or a knockout that you can put the grease line through. And I'm not finding one on this one. There are these little holes on the side where these safety chains hook, but those are not large enough to get the fitting through and they're not quite in the right place to get over to it. So I'm just going to cut those openings on the side a little bit bigger so I can actually get my line on my grease gun through. So even after I cut this hole out bigger, I still can't get a grease fitting on it. It's got to come more from the back because that fitting is kind of at a funky angle. I know I could get a 90 degree fitting and change that out, but I don't really feel like doing all that. So it looks like about back here. So now I've cut a huge hole in the top of this and it's still hard to get this, the fitting onto the Zerk because it's at a bad angle. Looks like I'm gonna have to take this shaft all the way off of the bush hog just to be able to get that Zerk lined up where I can actually grease it on a regular basis. So I'm gonna pull this whole drive shaft off by taking the shear bolt out. What you've got is a slip clutch and a whole hub assembly for that slip clutch. It has a bolt that goes through the clutch and through the gearbox output shaft. All right, so I rotated this Zerk to a little bit better angle and I still can't get this fitting on. I'm gonna go see if I can find a fitting or a Zerk that makes this easier. So I stopped what I was doing and I went and got a regular tip for my grease gun because there was no way this lock and lube was going on there. And I love this lock and lube. It's phenomenal to be able to clamp onto the Zerk and know that your grease is going where it's supposed to, but it's a lot longer. And this is so tight to fit in there, I just don't think it's gonna work. So we'll put this regular grease fitting on here and see if we can get in there now. All right. I'll go ahead and hit the other end. So now we've greased both ends of the actual U-joints on the shaft. We'll grease this plastic housing that goes over it as a safety device. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and grease the two Zerks on the wheel. I did go get some new blades for the bush hog because I wanted to be able to compare how much these are actually worn out. I've still got two jobs here, one being changing the blades, sharpening the old blades. The other job is to change the oil in this, but I'm running out of daylight, so I'm going to take this up in the shop and finish in there. All right, so to do this, I guess there's two ways of draining this oil. One, you can flip the bush hog over. I don't want to do that. So the second way is to siphon out the gear oil. So I went and picked this up from Harbor Freight. I think it was like $5. And then for the blade, the nut on the actual cutting blade is a 42 millimeter or a 1 and 11 sixteenths. 
Uh, even at Harbor Freight, they did not have any impact socket sets this big. Nowhere in my local town had a socket this big. I had to buy like a big trucker's tool set, but it gave me this and a massive breakover bar. And then I had to get adapters to go down to my half inch drive. But I should have everything I need to finish this now. I'll go get a bucket to drain the oil in and we'll get to it. Just so you guys know, I do have jack stands under the bush hog, so I'm not just relying on the hydraulics. Yeah, that socket set going up to three and an eighth inches was more than I wanted to spend today, but I guess now I've got it for whatever else I might run into. Not that I'm planning to buy a semi or anything, but I wouldn't mind having an old dump truck like K&H Tractors has. Oh, that gearbox is foul. That smells absolutely awful. And it doesn't look like oil. It's kind of a dark gray. Let me grab the other camera and get a shot of what that looks like. It's thin oil and it's foul. That's definitely no good. It's just an old junk gas can I don't even have a lid for anymore. Well, sucking it up. I said it was thin, but it looks awful thick coming down that hose, so. Well, I put the tube on the end of this, stuck it down in there and just started pumping away. I thought, here we go. But all of a sudden it stopped pumping. I thought it can't be empty yet. Well, it wasn't empty. I popped off the tube and dropped it in here. Just hoping I can get it out. Here's a lesson for you and me both is make sure this is really down in there good and then don't crank it back and forth too much. It might pop out on you like this. That really is not held in there that well. Alright, I've probably got a funnel somewhere, but I don't feel like looking for it. So I'm going to try to take this little scrap of cardboard and roll it up into a funnel. And if I spill some, that's okay. I don't really care. This is... GL5 SAE 8090 gear lubricant. All right, that looks like it's gonna work as a funnel. The hole in the bottom is kind of small, so it's running slow. So. It makes perfect sense to change the oil in this, but I wouldn't have thought of it. If a couple of people here on the YouTube channel, my regular viewers, suggested it. And so, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe because I need more of these free life coaches to teach me things to do on my videos. I really do appreciate you guys for all the suggestions. One of my most popular videos is the bush hogging 49 acres with this little six foot bush hog. And that was an awesome project besides just being a popular video. But in that video, I was seeing how early I could get out there to beat the heat. It was really hottest part of the summer. And I got out there about five in the morning, decided to sharpen the blades before I started cutting. And I sharpened the wrong side. A couple people in the comments said, hey, I think you sharpened the wrong side. I'm like, no, no, I didn't. I know, I know which side of a blade to sharpen. And then I rewatched it the other day. I did sharpen the wrong side. 
So in addition to being beat to heck, these are sharpened wrong. But we'll take them off and see if they're salvageable. It's got a cutout here on the top that gives you access to take the, the nut loose without getting underneath the bush hog. All right. Apparently this tool has 600 foot pounds of torque or they weren't tight enough. I'm gonna say it's got that much torque. See if we can get under there and drop the blade down. Looks like I've been carrying a souvenir up there. Let's see if we can wrestle that out here in a minute. I don't know if there's anywhere good to clip this camera. We'll flip her upside down. I should have known that the age-old strategy of jerk it back and forth until it falls would come through for me. So I cannot believe how thick these blades are. I mean, if you've been around bush hogging and heavy equipment, then this is no big deal, but just massive thick. And this one is bent pretty badly. Think about the amount of force it would take to bend something like that. And you can see here that it's not just bent down, it's bent at an angle. And I can see why I wasn't getting a good cut. And if you look, I'll bring the camera up here closer. If you look right there, you can see how much the edge is dinged up. Which that would be fine, you could grind that out. But then there's a, you can see that bevel on the back side? That's just me being an idiot that morning. That's all, that's the only way to say it. One thing I'll note on the new blade is that this edge is not sharp. It's angled. Big difference between angled and sharp. It's uh, got a blunt edge still on it. But I'll definitely switch to these. One more direction to look at them, I guess, is the width and just see how much meat's gone off of it. Look at that. This is remarkable to me. I've had this bush hog let I've had this bush hog less than a year. I've lined these back edges up and just look at how much material is missing off of this. At the top, you're talking about an inch of material that's gone and I've never sharpened this edge right here. I accidentally sharpened the back once, but I didn't remove all that material. Pretty crazy. So, I'm going to find out if I can put this back together myself. I did remember which way it came out. That's an important distinction. Alright, so, I've got this pushed up through the hole. The key is facing this way, so I've got the key up through there. I've got the nut and the washer, and I've got it started. Now, I've got my 14-year-old daughter out here, and she told me that only old guys watch this YouTube channel. So if you're watching and you're not an old guy, put that in the comments so I can show it to her. Because I just told her that probably half the kids in her class at school are subscribed to this channel, but we'll find out, I guess.
One more thing I might point out is when I googled about this brush hog, it said that this nut took a 42 millimeter, but it said a 1 and 11 sixteenths was close enough. I think it was like, I can't remember what the difference was, but it was really close. My socket got stuck on there, and I was worried it had rounded it off, but it didn't. But you'd be better off if you can find the 42. So, we got one blade. Hopefully the other one goes smooth. Rotate this guy around until I see a nut come up. After I get this second blade changed, all I've got to do is make sure the gearbox is tight. I was really hoping these gearbox bolts were tight, because if not, I think you have to pull the stump jumper to tighten them up. But I can't turn them, so we're going to call them tight. All right, that felt like quite a bit of work because I hadn't done everything before and I didn't have everything I needed. Now that I've done it all once and I've got all the tools, it really wouldn't take that long. And the part about trying to access the grease fitting, I should never have to do again. Even though it's a little bit of a hassle doing this maintenance, it's worth it because if you don't maintenance your equipment, you will be replacing your equipment. So I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links to more of our videos on the screen right here, and I'll see you next time.